Hey everybody, this is Brian from pnbhomesteading.com. It's Sunday morning. Thought I'd do a little early uh, property walk just so I, you guys could see uh, what's been progressing here on the little urban homestead we have. Uh, so I'll go ahead and turn the camera around and we'll do a little walk around. It rained last night, pretty good, so it's going to be quite wet. It's one thing you can expect from the Pacific Northwest is rain. <laughs> okay, I'll turn this around and we can go for a walk here. Uh, you can see that the the clover's coming along. I reseeded a little bit more last night, so that way it should start germinating this week. We're supposed to have some more rain and maybe a little more warm weather, so I'm also going to be putting uh, clover out here underneath the rose bushes, so that's going to give us a little more fertility underneath there. And you can see the, the comfrey bushes over here, they're coming up, the ones that we put in for over here for the chop and drop for the rose bushes. So we're going to be chopping that once it gets a little fuller and uh, putting that around our rose bushes. So that way it'll give them some more nutrients, help them get some more intense blooms this spring. Go up around here. We're on the side yard now. There's the sea berry. They're growing. And the goji berries are fully, fully leafed out now. So we should start seeing the little blooms on there soon and we got our mint and there's the raspberries and i've been used to taking this mint and i put this in my i got enough now on here to where i pick a couple of these and i put it in my coffee or my tea and it's uh, very good and it's free oh, back up here here's our japanese maple this is the one that paul and i have had for probably well, must be at least 15 years. We dug it up out of the front yard when we redid our remodeling and moved it back here and it seems to really like this spot. So we've got four others on our property that we're trying to get to be that size. So here we're coming up into the upper yard. You can see the apple tree here. This is our Liberty apple. It's getting its little fruit buds all starting to blossom out. We usually get at least 40 apples off of this tree. On a good year, a really good year, we had 60. So, I'm hoping to duplicate that with all the other fruit trees we have around the property. Here's the upper yard garden boxes. You can see the clover there is really starting to fill in. Along with, we have the, uh, the heating stone rocks that I put in there last weekend. That's going to be around each of the tomato plants that we're going to be putting in this year to help keep them warm. We got up here, so we got, uh, I did a little chop and drop this yesterday around all the fruit trees of the comfrey because we have it tall enough now to where the comfrey is available to start dropping down for nutrients. So I'm putting that around each of the fruit trees. And you can see here we got our, these are our red uh, gummies. They've got their flowers out. So hopefully this is their second year here in the yard. We're going to be getting some production off of those. And then these are the salmon berries. They look a lot like a raspberry bush, uh, but they have a different type of berry. And these also are their second year here in the yard. And you can see they've grown quite a bit because these started out as like little small, oh, I'd say six inch starts last year. So they'll be producing. Here's our blueberries, some of our blueberries. These, these kind of are kind of him hawing along because they get too much sun that afternoon hot afternoon westerly sun so that's why we have the fig tree here like you can see he's starting to butt out and hopefully that's going to start to get a little bigger and once it's bigger it'll produce some shade for these plants so we'll go up here here's our upper yard here's our upper yard seating bench i've shown that before there's something i haven't really talked about before is that's log dog we nicknamed him log dog because uh we had a tree trimmed up here and had a big section taken out that was dying and the way the structures of this tree was it looked like a something you could shape into a log so i got my chainsaw out and i shaped it stuck a tail in it and now we call this log dog and we're letting moss grow over the top of it so it'll be fully covered maybe another year or two and you know it looks like a dog <laughs> at least that's what our dogs think they bark at it uh, you know here's some other stuff up here in the upper hillside 
this is mainly just planted just to give some color and variety to our yard on the upper hillside compared to the yards up over the fence which are mainly just ivy English ivy that's invaded and tried to choke off many of the trees I usually go over on the upper hillside every year and trim down the runners that start going up the trees to choke them off so that way you know the trees don't die off as you can see up there there's many up there that have the uh, whole uh, tree covered with ivy so let's go take a walk down this way go down over here you can see the wildflowers there they're starting to germinate pretty good inside these areas back in there and then I have a bunch of arugula that I threw out here yes last year that's already starting to bloom up over there so let's go walk over this way here's the bird feeders I got those all cleaned out and they were being used by the uh, the birds yesterday pretty heavily and usually around 8 to 9 a.m. is when they really start coming around the birds in this area here let's see here's the fence box got the rocks in there I showed that last week and, uh, you can see the peas along the fence there I kind of pushed some of them back to start getting them to go up the little trellis things that I have set up which that's another money saving tip if you want to buy trellises just go down to your local big box store and get uh, cement for like concrete you go and get that and that's a wire mesh that you put in concrete for doing like driveways and that type of thing and I use that for making some cheaper trellises instead of having to go pay like sixty dollars for a special painted and coated one I figure you know it'll last me these those up there have lasted me for I'd say a good five years now and they're still still in good shape I just pull them out every year and hang them up and let my beans and my peas grow on them oh, okay anyway Here's another, uh, this is our one of our Golden Delicious. He's starting to, to bud out. And these are our current bushes. These currants, each one of these is going to turn into a string of those uh, little buds there. They're going to turn into you know, a, a cluster of currant berries. And so this is their second year here. And these kind of really took off last year. And I did take a cutting off of one of these. And I made a couple of you know starts off of them but then they ended up dying over the winter because I don't think they were cold hardy enough and their roots were inside the little pot I started three of them and none of those came back this year they're in that pot there so and then we got our tomatoes inside the hoop house here you can kind of see them in there they're just hanging out wait until a little warmer weather I opened up the tent yesterday and gave them some fresh air so we got our tulips this is our other uh, golden delicious apple tree you can see him budding out and there's the tulips this is where Paula comes and picks our tulips from and a bunch of these little clusters we have brings them in the house and go over here you see the clover there is really taken off to accent where our trails are and then we have wildflowers in there. And then that over there is uh, daikon radish around that tree around with the comfrey. There's another cluster of the tulips. And our lower yard. And there's a shot of the birdhouses. By the way, I made all these birdhouses along with their, uh, their posts. And I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a speple, separate video on that to where I can talk about all the different types of birdhouses. I have you know, a couple of different styles that I've put together. I've got like a, you know, over here you can see the little green ones. I call those the contemporary because they look like a contemporary house. The little yellow ones, they're like a Swiss chalet, I call it. And then these blue ones over here and red, these are the farmhouse look. They sort of look like an old style barn. How's the air conditioner coming on? Sorry about that. And then up on the hillside up there, those are the uh, the red ones. I call those the craftsmen because they have uh, kind of like a little hip roof on it, and they have eaves. And uh, that one up there, if you can see it behind the feeder, that red one, 
that's the one that we have uh, a nesting pair of the black chickadees in. So I guess that's kind of it for this week's update on the yard and the walk. So I'll be talking to you guys soon. All right. So this is Brian from pndhomesteading.com signing off. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.